Come on. Say, are y'all ready to praise him tonight? I say, are you ready to praise him tonight? Come on and let's worship him, yes. Say, yeah, yes. Yes. Come on, yeah. Lord, you are my father. And I'm your child. Come on and help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Yeah. I'll help me, Lord. But you are strong. Yeah. Help me. Yeah. Help me. Don't take your head down. Nobody, nobody get weak. And I saw, so need a rest. I'm calling on you. Lord. Pick it up a little bit. Now. Come on, yeah. Well, Lord, you want my father. And I'm your little bitty child. Oh, yeah. Help me. Oh, yeah. Oh, help me. Oh, oh. But you are strong, yeah. Lord, help me, Lord. Well, my body, I just got a little weak. But my soul, so need a rest. I'm calling you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Well, let me tell you what it is.
Jesus. We need you, Lord. Right here, right now. You know what I mean? service and turn it over to our pastor. Give her a great big amen as she comes. Well, it's good to be here. It has been a beautiful day. Yes. Thanks to the church for all your kindness that you showed me. Uh, the cards, the, the notes that you put in there, I read every one of them. Thank you from the depths of my heart. Uh, Oh, I am so overwhelmed. This is unbelievable. Angel did this, and I got to read this because I said I said to uh, to one. She said, "Angel wrote." I said, "No, Angel ain't wrote that." So I called Angel. She said, "Yes, I did." I said, "What?" I didn't believe it. it's called Mother's Day cake. It says one cup of obedience, three cups of make it happen, two and a half cups of are you praying, one and a half cups of make me understand. Two tablespoons of you're going to hell. <laughs> Three teaspoons of ask me if I care. And one cup and one cup of how dumb are you? <laughs> and then it says, mix the above ingredients with love, whiskey and forgiveness, stir in giving, sift in patience, layer on unselfishness. Sprinkle with salvation, knead with kindness, top with mercy, and garnish with the truth. Set aside and allow to rise, but if it falls, be willing to stand in the gap. Bake on high until well done. If not set, if not uh, set in the if it's not set in the center, uh, put it back through the fire. Bake until golden brown and serve generously to mom daily. <laughs> I would have never thought Angel would write that. And he said, give me credit for something. Yeah, I got to have this put on something. That is just unbelievable. It sounds just like me. My kind of cake. Yeah, but it's good to be here. You know I'm not going to be back now for another three weeks after tonight. A rest I desperately, desperately need. And I'm looking forward to all the things that I can do. 
during this time. I trust that you will give yourself to God and do what you need to do. It's important that you take that which you've been given and use it, apply it in your life. It makes all the difference in the world. I am so thankful that God called me to do my job. As difficult as it may seem sometimes, I am still thankful that he called me to do this. My life is full, is rich with his mercy, his grace, his love. Everything that he could possibly give to anybody, he's given to me. And I've had a good life, one that I can feel good about. Children who love you, uh, people who reach, reach out and touch the places that need to be touched. Only God could do it, and I'm thankful for it. We're so happy for any visitors we have tonight. We're glad that you came. God is an overwhelming God. It's just overwhelming. And I said, how do we do all that we do with what we have? Because God blesses everything. And thanks again uh, for everything. I don't have enough words to say thank you for all that's been done. How much God has blessed me, I'm overwhelmed. I really am. I'm trying to absorb all of this. It's a lot up leading up to this day and then now. So I'm thankful. I wasn't going to preach tonight, and I thought, well, maybe I get to church. Maybe I will, and I think I will. Since this is my last time for three weeks, praise God for the victory. <laughs> I need a rest. I need a rest. Yes, but if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Joshua, the seventh chapter. Father, we're grateful tonight for your blessings and all that you've done for us. Thank you for the privilege it is to come to your house, to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray, God, that you might be glorified, that not one person in this building would leave this place feeling in any way that they have not been in your presence. I pray, God, for the anointing of God to be upon thy servant. I pray that you give your people an ear to hear and a heart to receive it, and we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just in case, all right. Um, let's go. I'm going to read some of this, but not all of it. Some I'm going to tell you about it because it'll take too long. It says, Second verse says, And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So they went up hither, thither of the people about 3,000 men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 36 men. For they chased them from before the gate even unto, even unto Sheberim and smote them in the going down whereof the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth and put his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening tide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou had brought all these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies and for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall bear, hear of it, shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do to your great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou upon thy face. I want to preach a little bit to you tonight. Something the Lord brought to me this week was something I had never really thought about before. Now, we find that Joshua is having a temper tantrum. And so, when the Lord said, when you find people who complain and, and murmur and grumble about things, he says, it's nothing more than a temper tantrum to try to get God to do this. 
And I can tell you tonight, he don't, he don't bow to that. He don't bow to it. You just be down there killing yourself for nothing. He's not going to do it. So when I looked at this, I think about every day of our lives, if we don't watch it, we find ourselves complaining about things. We won't change. We want this and want that. We want God to do this. We want him to do that. And we go through the process of all these things trying to get God's attention. And one thing I have learned over the years and still learning is that your best bet is to take it as it comes and in all things give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Yes. And so when I looked at that, I looked at Joshua. Now Israel was going out to war and they really didn't need many men to go because they said for the most part, we don't, there's not many of them. We can handle them. But instead, they turned their backs and ran away. And what Joshua did, he tore his clothes off. And then he fell on the earth, his face before the ark, said, Lord, what's going on? He's upset. Then he had the nerve to ask God, and what about your great name? I mean, you just going to let all this happen. What about your great name? You know, I mean, that's really getting down to the nitty gritty. And he says, so what will we say to our enemies? What are we going to do? You know, a lot of times when people are mumbling and grumbling and complaining, oh, the thing you call it God, it ain't got nothing to do with God, got everything to do with you. Uh, everything to do with you. But you want to say for a minute, all you want to do is go through and say, you know, I don't know why the Lord would let this happen to me. I ask God why, Lord. Honey, just turn back, look at yourself, and you ain't got to ask him why. Ask yourself why. Why did you take a road you shouldn't take? Why did you do what you did? Why didn't you get some counsel and direction on what to do? Why is your life messed up because you didn't acknowledge God? He said, if you acknowledge me, ask me. He said, I will direct your path. I'll tell you which way to go. Listen to him. I was, uh, my mind was turned over in a message that I'm going to be working on this week. And it's, it's talking about uh, how when God gives divine direction, they are so plain. You cannot miss it. What man does, he does a piece of it, and he'll leave this out. And then he says, well, I've done what the Lord said, and nothing worked. No, you did not. If you did not do what he said, like he said, how he said, you didn't do what he said. We don't get things from God by saying, well, I'm just going to do this, but I won't worry about the rest of it. You got to do the whole thing, not a piece of it. But if the Lord says, go down this aisle, when you get there, turn left. When you get there, turn left again. You say, well, yeah, I turned left. But did you turn left again? Well, no, I, it wasn't on you. was no need to turn left again. Yes, it was if he said so. Yes, he said turn left again. You say, well, I was right there. But that time, man has a hard time of following instructions and doing what he's told to do. And then he blames God when things go wrong. You cannot blame God. Look at yourself. So Joshua, one thing I noticed as I was studying this was that God rarely speaks to your complaint. You know, I kept reading. He didn't, he didn't talk to Joshua about uh, all the things he was saying, about my, his great name. And all that. He, didn't, he didn't address. He said, Joshua, this is what he said. Get thee up. Wherefore are you laying on your face? Get up. See, we think if I go through all this and do all this, surely God's going, he's going to get me, I'm going to get his attention. You don't get his attention through complaining. He killed people in the wilderness for complaining. He said, I'm sick of these people. I'm tired of them, so I'm going to get rid of them. See, you cannot make God do anything. And you should not think for a moment that you can. You cannot do it. You've got to understand God has a plan for our life. In most cases, man does not like the plan that God has because we got our own plan. We think, I want to do this. Well, what's wrong with it? Listen, don't go down that road. I don't care how many people went down there. If God tells you not to go, don't go. Don't go, but we'll do it anyway. The Lord says to Joshua, Israel sinned. They've also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they've even taken up the accursed thing, have also stolen and dissembled, and they have put it even among their own, own stuff. 
So therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. If some things have happened here, you need to fix it. God said, except you move it. That's why I want to stand these churches that allow anybody, no matter what you do, if you're sinning and call yourself a member, it's okay. No, it's not okay. If you are sinning and call yourself a member of a church, a pastor should call you into question. Well, if you say you're a member of the church, if you say uh, that you love God, if you say that you've given your life to God, your life should depict that every day. And if it does not, you need to be called on the carpet about it. You should never be allowed to get away with it. So the Lord said, I want you to get up, Joshua. Why are you on your face? He didn't see what Achan did, but he thought something's wrong. So if it's something is wrong, let, let me go up here and tell God, what's your problem? I mean, I, 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 he thought, well, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to say, well, so, so what are we going to do when Israel turn their backs before their enemies? And then he goes on to say, and, and then what about your name? God ain't going to be caught up in that. What about your name? God ain't worried about his name. His name, you can't kill it. You can't destroy it. It is what it is. And you can't do nothing against it. So there's no use of you telling me, what about my, your name? God said, get up. Get up. If something wrong, go fix it. Here it is. Take care of it. And I tell you, I have heard more people over the years of the ministry say, um, I'm a, I just got mad with God. I thought you got some nerve. You know, if you get mad at many people, but don't let it be God. That, you should be afraid of that. I would fear that. You're going to get mad with God, call him in question. I've had people tell me, well, since I don't know why he took my mother and why he took my father and why he did. I'm thinking, he said once it's appointed unto man to die. And after that, to the judgment. You, Every one of us know we're going to die. Why are you calling God in question about why you died? You already told you that. So if your mama dies, he said that. If your daddy dies, he said that. If your children die, he already spoke to that. Who said, Lord, just didn't say nothing. I already told you that man is going to die. It's appointed to every person. You're not going to stay in this world forever. You're going to die. And then they seem alarmed. What? Did you hear that? She died? Yes. Oh, my God. She died? Yes. We still seem to be alarmed. Somebody died. Did you hear that? It's almost like we live in this um, some place where the devil has placed people that things don't seem really real. We act like we're going to live forever. And then when suddenly somebody stops breathing, we're alarmed at it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we had some of our people, when we had funerals here, were scared to pass the casket. I said, this is a sister of the church. The casket's right here. They back there at, the, at, that, at that pew right there, the first, the first uh, uh, front on this pew. Standing back there looking like this. I thought, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid? No people can't do you no harm. I told, I was teasing with my kids the other day. I said, boy, I wish when the Lord took me and I was in the casket and, and everybody came around, I said, <coughs> <laughs> I said, that church will clear out. Like, what, what is this? We're not used to this. I don't know why I was just thinking funny that day. I thought, boy, that would be funny. They said, what? Uh, you thought they stopped there? They'd make a way out of here and we'll be falling over people and everything else. We got to relax. When, we, when we're going through things, we got to look at, if you can't see the brighter side, believe that it's coming. You might not can see the light right now, but you know it's there. You know another thing that God never does anything out of the, uh, that's wrong for us. He said, I know you. My desires towards you are good. I'm not out to make your life miserable. You do a good job of that. You know how to make your life miserable. He doesn't. But we'd like to blame him because we haven't done what we needed to do. 
Too many times are we in a position, and I think we need to get to the place that we say, God, you know what? I'm just going to shut up. If I, if I find myself complaining, just shut up. It's a Lord, well, thank you anyway. You have to remind yourself that it's human nature at times. Well, what's, what's going to God, what are you going to do? And so, you know, sometimes he never says a word. He don't say nothing. Again, he'll speak, and again, he won't say anything. What are you going to do with it? If he speaks, good. If he doesn't, still good. Because he's not made mistakes. And another thing you better recognize, he does not have to clarify his movement. What he does, what he does, he does not have to tell you all about it. I mean, he can, but he don't have to. So we got to understand that we just flush. God knows we're weaklings. He knows that. That's why he said, let the weak say I'm strong. I came to make you strong. So you're not falling down everywhere. See, I want you to be up to par. Quit complaining about the, the troubles in your life. We have a lot of trouble. A man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. That's a part of life. When you're worried about, you know, it's raining again. You're not going to change it. It's not going to suddenly stop raining because you're frustrated. Lord, it's snowing again. Here it is in May. When is it going to stop? If you lived in Colorado anytime, you know we can get snow all the way up to the 15th or 20th of May. What are you talking about? They're like, oh my God, open my blinds. And oh God, I thought, is it snowing again? And I'll I be the first one to tell you, sometimes I feel that way. I look out and say, oh my God. It's gray outside. I hate gray. Because when the sun shines, you open the blinds like it's like, wow. You know, you feel like doing things, getting out and let things happen. and all that. But you look out and it's gray. It's like, I think I'll stay in the bed. Don't, don't open the blinds today. See, but we need the rain. We need the snow. We need all that. I said to the Lord yesterday, first, first of, uh, of the forecast was that it's going to be pretty all weekend, uh, warm, sunshine, and all this good stuff. And then it changed because our weather people don't have a clue what's going on in this city. And so if, if they tell you it's going to snow, it's probably going to rain. If they tell you it's not going to do anything, it's going to do both of them. They really don't have a clue. But when you see something over that mountain, you don't know what it's bringing. It's bringing something. <laughs> but I think, why are we, I think some of this stuff got to do with being spoiled. I don't know why he's not listening to me. You know, when you first get saved and you're a new convert, seem like everything you say to the Lord, he, he responds. But keep on being saved. Just keep on living saved. Just how shouting and how the Lord answered every prayer. We're going to tell you, he's going to answer something, but it ain't going to be when you think. You got to learn how to quit whining, whining about what's wrong. Oh, I said to the Lord, I don't know what it was. So, so. And he doesn't say one word. You will get God to respond to you greater by thanking him than you will ever get him to respond through complaining. Because he doesn't like murmuring and complaining. You know what? He says, listen to this. Um, when a person has a temper tantrum, this is church people. <laughs> an unpleasant and disruptive behavior or an emotional outburst. <laughs> Calm down, baby. What's your problem? I just want to tell something. I said, I need you to calm down. We can talk if you'll just calm down. And then if I got a husband and wife counselor, and well, well, Sister Rose, the thing is, is that she never thinks about me. That's not true. I, I said, I'm going to have to listen to one person at a time. And I need you to calm down. Because you getting upset in this office is not going to change one thing. Just chill. Lay back. Quit getting hyper. Nothing is worse than a hyper person. Every time you see them, they just. All you want to do is get away. Get away. Here she comes. Here he comes. Nothing is worse than a man hyper. And in the ministry, you deal with all of them. I'm saying, you got to calm down, son. 
wait a minute, let me hear what she's got to say, then I'll hear what you got to say. And then I'll tell you who's wrong, who's right in this situation. But what, calm down. Come in and say, well, yeah, okay, okay, yes, ma'am. But I thought, I thought, I need to say, I said, you're going to have to be quiet. And let me get through this and hear the whole story. So an unpleasant and disruptive behavior, emotional, can't solve anything because it's so emotional, out of control. It happens, don't have to be. Some outburst from nowhere. Just all of a sudden, here you go. Say one thing that rubs them and whoa. One thing, you ought to say a lot. One thing. And sudden, suddenly, here's this outburst of emotions that nobody understands me. And I've been putting up with this my whole life. What am I supposed to do? And I mean, you'd be surprised the people that take you back to their childhood. I say, you're grown, baby. You're grown. What, what I didn't have any control over when I was a kid, I have control over now. So why am I still talking about some childhood incident or behavior or whatever it may be when I'm a grown person now? Why are you still crying about that? I told you when I went to my went home to see my mom when she was in the hospital having surgery. <laughs> and my oldest brother was there, Marjorie was there, Robert was there, and, and somebody else I can't remember. Was they all talking about when we were kids? So my oldest brother said, and we look like we look like refugees. And I'm thinking, well, I don't look like one now. Why am I not happy that what I am today? Why am I worried about what used to be? And so he kept sitting there. There, my brother, he's dead now. God rest his soul. But he was sitting in there crying. And here, Marjorie Jones. I thought, let me get out of here. I went on, left the room, waiting room, went on down the hallway. I thought, if y'all ain't stupid, what are you talking about? We are 30 years past that day. And you still telling me that's where your issues flow from? Something is wrong with you. It's time as we grow and develop and mature, if you're ever going to do it, you can move on to whatever issues that may have been. Whatever things I face, I'm not there no more. I don't have to keep going back. Come on, that's why. That's why I'm, I'm like this. It's what. It's what. It's what they did to me. No, you're in control. Quit whining about your yesterday and what happened to you. When did that happen? When I was six. Let's move on. Let's move on. See, disruption is to cause disorder church people or turmoil to destroy the normal continuance for unity I was listening at the news this evening talking about Donald Trump and he says uh, they want us to unite he said I don't think unity we don't have to unite I thought you are stone crazy you are stone insane. Have you ever seen any house, the Bible says, any house divided against itself cannot stand. So why do you think it don't have to be unity? Of course, you got people that disrupt unity on every hand. And I thought, well, it serves the Republicans right after they dog Obama for eight years. I thought y'all need some issues. And boy, do you have one. I mean, they done everything to stop this fellow. This fellow kept on winning. And, and I remember Jeff Bush said, if you think you're going to insult people all the way to the White House, you better think again. He already insulted him. He done fell out to raise everybody done fell out. And, 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 and this man is so insane. He is so insane. And he said on the, on the, on, while he was out uh, campaigning, when they asked him about Ryan being the, being the, uh, in the house speaker, he said, he gonna, I'm not necessarily going to do what he says. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to tell you, I don't know why we're meeting with Ryan anyway, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do whatever the people said. You're in trouble. People are crazy. And you're never going to do everything that people want you to do because it's not even practical. It's not, it's impossible. 
And I just get a kick out of it. I laugh, I, I laugh at it all the time. He's the biggest joke of the election time. And so I watch him just for the fun. I thought, you are stupid. And they're about to have a nervous breakdown because he says, you don't need unity. How, how do you figure that? You say you're a Republican, but I don't have to be unified with you. Are you kidding me? That's the way a lot of people are. They cause disorder or turmoil. They are known to destroy the normal continuous for unity. They're always bringing up confusion. They bring division everywhere. They're just problems. Problems and more problems. Because they don't, they don't really submit to God. They're so busy doing their own thing. Come in and they complain about everything. If you stood on your head 20 hours a day, they find out oh, if they told you to do it, well, why don't you do it better than that? You can't please people. See? When you have an outburst, it's a sudden or violent release or outpouring of public disturbance just out of control, causing problems, causing issues. Do you know I've never seen anybody who complained all the time that's happy? It doesn't breed happiness. It breeds frustration. It brings this feeling that What's going on? What can I do? Nothing. You got to understand there are things we can do and there are things that we can't do. And if I can't do it, let me leave it alone, give it to God, and go my way. You're not going to change it. You don't have the power to change it. It doesn't matter whether you are four feet or six feet tall. You can't change it. Well, I'm just too short. You're done. You're not going to add to the Bible says you, a man cannot add to his height, neither take from it. So why am I walking around talking about, I wish I was taller? Forget it. You're not going to be you are what you are. My grandson just keeps growing and keeps growing. His dad is 6'5", and he's, is he six feet yet? He's almost six feet at 15. He just keeps growing and keeps growing. My gosh, you look like every week we see you growing some more. And Lisa said, don't say he's going to keep growing because, you know, it's too hard to find pants. It's too hard to find that. Yeah, but the truth is he's, he, he's keeping going. And so I thought, but he's got a father that's 6'5". He's got his father's sister. I mean, some of them are six feet tall. Uh, it's all over the place. He don't stand a chance. Where will he stop at? We don't know. But one thing about it, complaining and getting frustrated about it won't change it. It is what it is. My, 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 my daughter always say, Mama, don't say that because it's a hard time finding clips and pants right now. I don't want to be bothered having to go through that with this boy. You probably will. And so you might as well say, well, if it keeps growing, we'll find some pants. Because when you get to the, do, 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 it ain't changing. You get up next morning, he's another inch taller. You're not going to change it. Why do we feel like we need the power over everything to make things work? You are not going to have the power over everything. No matter what you say. Just think about it. I felt like if there was this one thing in my life I could control. Come on. The 600-pound people that's on TV, you know what they say? Well, I felt like I had, I had that much control. You didn't have any control. But if you had control, you'd have never made 600. You never got there. You had no control. Or else when I was anorexic and I was getting rid of my food and stuff, I eat and I go purge or whatever, I, I felt like that was some of my life I had control. You had no control. What's bad in your life, you do not have control over it. Face that. The only person who can give you control is God. And we got to ex accept that. Quit getting mad with people about who they are and complain. Look at her. We complain about everything, about the dog on the street, the cat in the tree, the rabbit coming across the floor. Like, look at that. You know, listen to people. You ought to mark this down next week and see how many times did you complain. Just, mark, just write it down. You, you'll start getting shame. Man, what am I? What are you doing? You're going to say, wow. Yeah, oh, here I go again. Oh, here I go again. Oh, here I go again. In the course of a week, you can't even begin how much time you spent complaining. Waste of time. Can't change it, see? So, uh, when a person is constantly complaining, 
they are constantly expressing some, about some grief or, or discontent. Discontent never makes anybody happy. Contentment makes you happy. When I'm content with where I am and what's going on in my life today, that makes me happy. But if I'm discontented, oh, restless. I'm mad at everybody. Why did God do it for you? I've been praying for you. No, you may have thought you were, and maybe your whole attitude made you not get nothing. See? Complaints is to express grief or pain or grumble to mutter in discontent. You can say, you know, what you say? Nothing. What you say? Nothing. I ain't got anything to say. No, you really don't. See? Mumbling to utter with a low, you know, articulate voice. Remind me of my uncle, he's assistant pastor in the church at home. And back in those days, people talked to themselves a lot. I mean, and there wasn't no cell phone around or nothing. <laughs> I'd be so ashamed of my uncle sitting up on the platform doing this here. <laughs> and they don't even know they're talking. Talking out loud on the platform, making all kind of sign language. And I'm thinking, boy, that's embarrassing. See, nowadays, if you see people talking in the car, you figure it's a cell phone. Back in them days, there were no cells. And he was just talking, talking. And my grandmother, too, you could walk in the house and, you know, I mean, just going on about what ain't going to happen. He come and says, oh, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Well, you're having an a unbelievable conversation with yourself. <laughs> Common in the time we came up. Common. You don't see a lot of it because people are talking on phones and, and all this stuff. <laughs> Listen to this. Discontent is a sense of grievance, dissatisfaction, restless. Looking for something, improvement on something. He's tired. Every time I think I'm going to get something done, here it comes. They say when it rains, he broke. It's Murphy's Law. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. You know what? You just get up every day like a fool, confessing all this stuff to yourself and making your life totally miserable. I'm just not. When I got up this morning, I thought, mm -mm, I'm just, I'm not in the mood. I'm going on this job today. I don't want nobody saying nothing to me because I'm, I'm practicing being mean. I'm practicing. I ain't got no reason to be mean. Just mean. And I'm thinking, what did you get out of it? A pink slip. <laughs> you didn't get nothing out of it. You know how much we disfigure our own lives and our future all by the way we think and feel and, and we talk about it. Every, you say, I don't want to talk to them. It's the same thing. They're going to tell you the same thing, the same problem, and, and over and over again. Once is enough. Once is too much. See, we want to feel like we have a right to release what's going on inside. You can release it. You don't have to be crazy. You can talk. Try to make it a point that I'm going to avoid complaints because I guarantee you when you leave this church tonight and get in the car, immediately, you know, sometimes I hate to drive out here. Look at him. He does a, You're not going to change that. You're not going to change it. So he's like, he does, get a line. You are not helping yourself. Get, get, run a horn. Get out. Just calm down. Calm down. That's why people are so, having to have all kind of drugs to fix them up. They're all messed up. They, they just hollering and screaming at folks and bad attitude toward another driver. Just go on. 
I wish they, I wish I could hit him in the back. I wish they wasn't. Look at, I, I ain't waiting for this. Like, go ahead. By the time you get to your destination, your nerves are shot. Here we go. Say, oh, get out at the job. All of said, are these fools out here all crazy? You just as crazy. Because for you to let that eat at you and come into you like that, you shouldn't do it. It causes you unhappiness. See? You don't want to do that. You don't want to be a person that's dissatisfied all the time. Some things don't happen for us right now because they're not supposed to happen for us. And God has said, I want you to pray about it. I want you to quit talking about it. Just pray about it. Listen. It came to pass. On the morrow that Moses said unto the people, ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord, preadventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, if not, I'm going to ask you to blot me out. I pray thee out of thy out of thy books, which thou hast written. If you, now Moses I told the folks, I'm going up and make atonement for you. And then he tells God, these folks are seeing a great sin. Now, if you ain't going to forgive them, in other words, I got to take them a positive message back. And if you ain't going to forgive them, just block my name out. You know what God said? He said, the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto you of. Behold, my angels shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. God said, don't come up here with, a, with something going on. You got you irritated. You want to forgive these people. And if you don't do it, I'm going to put it on the line to you. Just go ahead and blot my name out. God said, I'm not going to blot you. I'm going to blot the person's name out who sinned. Now, go ahead. You're not going to make God move because you call him on the carpet, so to speak. Not going to happen. There's too many, too many hyper people. See? And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. And his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that they were in the uttermost part of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. He says, I'm tired of these people. You don't want to be around anybody that they have nothing positive to say about life. Everything is negative. The minute you spot them, the minute they open their mouth, get out. That stuff is as poison as if a snake bit you. It will destroy your joy. It will pull you down. I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care if it's your daddy. Whoever it is. If they keep, all they can talk about is something negative, get off my back. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Give me a break. I thought about Joe on that when his. Daddy was getting ready to leave. Gonna wake him up at one o'clock in the morning. You don't wake up colored people in uh, all times of the night. They don't handle that very well. You go. Uh, 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 I mean, what is it? Come on, one o'clock in the morning. I think I'm gonna leave. Go ahead. Why am I over at your house? Oh, go ahead, do whatever you want to do. But why are you calling me at one in the morning? I got some other thing. I'm trying to get some sleep. You want to be a fool? Go right ahead. I'm not joining with you. Don't have time. We spend too much time dwelling on people's complaints rather than praying and giving them to God. Just pray. Say, hey, I'm praying for you. Move on. Well, could you, I'm praying for you. Hopefully God will have mercy on your complaining soul. Because I'm, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I don't want to hear it. I used to be at the desk shaking people's hands when they're going out. And... I said, how you doing? Well, Sister Rose, I said, God is good, ain't he? <laughs> Keep going. Because here they come with this. You can tell by the tone. Well, I said, well, how's everything going? Well, I said, God's going to take care of everything. All you got to do is trust him. Believe him. And they walk away from the desk looking like this. I need somebody to unload on, not me. Not me. Bye. 
Why? Sometimes you don't want to ask people, how you doing? They're never doing okay. Well, I tell you, I was doing pretty good until such and such a thing happened. And then, you know, I just I just prayed about it. It looked like God wouldn't even answer what I was saying. I, I got it. I got it. No, he's not. Go have a seat. See? You don't. People wear you out as a preacher. You better know how to tune it out, too. I hate to tell you this. What is it? So and so and so and so. All they need to do is pray. Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod. He smoked the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. And, uh, he, he said, because you, you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Moribia because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and he was sanctified in them. Now he got, one time he told Moses to speak to the rock. Next time he, he, he told him to go over there. You weren't supposed to strike that rock. But he was mad with them people. I surely understand how he feels. See? He said, here now, you rebels. God said, go over there now. I want you to speak to the rock. You rebels, get over here. You want some water? Here it is. And God said, now, you're not going to the promised land. You ain't even going because you didn't do what I told you to do. I didn't tell you to hit it. I told you to speak to it. And because you didn't sanctify me in the eyes of the people, you're not going to the promised land. Now, when Moses got ready to die, you know what the Lord told me? He said, go up to Mount or either Mount Sinai. I go up there and look over. See what you could have had. I don't ever want to be in a place that God tell me, look at that, but you will never get it. He went up and looked, and he, and he said, and after you see it, die. That's power. You're not going. But you didn't sanctify me. No, God don't take no crap off of leaders. Do it like I tell you. Or else I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold you accountable for that. And so people say, he, God got him because he called them rebels. No, he didn't. He got, it, he got it because he didn't sanctify him in the eyes of the people. I told you to speak to it. Go ahead and slam the rock down, you bunch of rebels, you thirsty hounds. Come over here. He was tired of it. Oh, I understand. Boy, he had four million headaches. Dealing with people, complaining all the time about something. See, listen to this. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And I so, I so loaf this light bread. Now God's, God's running them bread down from heaven. Ain't never had no bread like this. It's unheard of. He's raining it down from heaven. You know, we sick of this light bread. Telling God, I'm tired of this, this stuff you call bread coming down here he said we should have stayed in Egypt you were a slave you're the one who prayed 400 years for God to bring you out and then when he brings you out you tell me wish we'd have stayed in Egypt it, it would be so good if God opened the Red Sea and said across it I'm going to drown you too <laughs> just like I drowned Pharaoh just get on back in the water I gave you a chance. I got you through. You know, people are something else. No matter how much you do, no matter how far you go, they won't, won't do their part. Oh, we wish to God we'd have stayed in Egypt. That's all they talked about. And, and, and then one time they go as far as to say, when we was in Egypt, we had the leeks and the onions, and we sat by the flesh pots, and, and we done all this stuff. You're headed to the promised land where, where milk and honey flows. And you want to go back and be a slave? That's how people backslide. They leave, they're on their way to heaven, turn around, go back. I'm like, bet this for I got saved. That's a lie. Ain't, ain't nothing that you had in this world was better than being saved. Not, none of it. See? And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died because they complained against God and against Moses. Moses, I, I sympathize with Moses. I feel for him with what he was going through. Now, these are the same people that he done told the Lord to blot his name out. You ain't going to forgive the blot. My, don't ever put yourself online for church people. <laughs> oh, no. 
How as sure as you put your line, yourself on the line, honey, them same people uh, do something else to you. Now you tell what you brought us out of here for. You wanted to come out. You forgot? No, just full of it. And then I go, we want some. When we was in Egypt, you was down there as a slave. Pharaoh was abusing you, treating you like dirt, and you're talking about we were better off in Egypt. You're going to the promised land. Many of them never got there. They died in the, in the wilderness because God didn't put up with them because they was complaining the whole time. I can't imagine he'd been that good to you. You don't saw him open up the Red Sea. You saw him when he drowned Pharaoh's army. You saw all of them. wish we would stay back in Egypt. If somebody tells me I was doing better since Road before I got sailed, so I'll see you. I'll see you, no such thing. Nobody's better unsaved. That's not true. That's not true. God told Jonah, go down to Nineveh, preach to those people. He didn't want to go to Nineveh, so he buys, he buys him a ticket going the opposite direction. And then after God met him in the ocean and told the fish to go over and swallow it, swallow that backslidden preacher up. Then he's down there talking out of the belly of hell, crying out, you're right. You could have been, you could have been down in Nineveh, took care of God's business, and come on back. No. You know what he said to the Lord? After, after he goes down there and preached to him, after, after God then got him out of the belly of the fish, uh, he, he, he's stinking like a rat. He runs to, he runs to Nineveh. He ain't even had time to take a bath. Uh, uh, Nineveh is a three-day journey. He made it in one. By the time God got through teaching him something. Then he gets out there and preaches to the people, and the people repent. He gets mad with God. That's why I didn't want to come down here and preach to him. I knew if they asked you to forgive him, you were going to forgive him. You're a preacher, you dodo. Yes. You should have been happy that God had mercy on those people. That's why I didn't want to come here. He's going to ask you to forgive him. You were going to do it. Then he gets, gets, gets mad and go sit out somewhere under a plant called a gourd. He's more worried about that plant than he is. He didn't even cause the plant to grow. Because he's sitting in the hot sun, the gourd grows up and gives him some shade, and, 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 and then it, it goes back down, he's upset. The God's looking at this preacher thinking, I don't believe this. you upset over the gourd. You didn't plant it. You did nothing. But some souls, all these souls in Nineveh, you wanted me to kill them. God's got a problem with that. A real problem with it. So I got a lot of people that feel like I want to go and do this and do that. And I guess I just told Lord, if that's, if that's where you're going to treat me, just forget. Well, you said what? Are you kidding me? You said that to God. Yeah. I want him to know how I felt. And you think he cares? He doesn't really care. As bad as the brother in the church that didn't have a wife for seven years and told the Lord, well, until you give me a wife, I'm going to sleep on the floor. I said, your temper chapter ain't going to bring God in. He don't mind you sleeping on the floor. So if you think God's going to say, oh, my God, you're going to sleep on the floor, here's your wife. Uh, you More than likely, you're going to wait longer because she keep complaining about it. Shut up. Go on to sleep. God then told the Lord, Lord, I'm 30-something years old. Really? And you think he didn't know that? So, so what I'm going to do? Mama, I just told God, I'm going to sleep on the floor, and then you, you don't give me no wife. I said, he doesn't mind. Go ahead. Your temper tantrums get you nothing. You tell God to get to upset. Now, you read the story of Job. Job was pouring out his heart to God, and he wouldn't answer him. He wouldn't speak to him. Yet he just said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, who is perfect and upright, and showeth evil? And the devil said, let me have it. It would have been so nice if God had said, now, Job, the devil came in this morning. He's coming after you, and this is what's going to happen. Didn't tell him nothing. Nothing is more uh, tantalizing to the Christian, if I can use that word, than I don't know what's going to happen. Well, do you trust God that he's going to come out for your best end? He said, I have your interests at heart. So do you trust him? 
that he's going to do good by you? He's got a process. And sometimes you're not right directly in the process, but you are, you are you involved in the process. You got to just look up and say, Lord, you know what? Thank you for what you did. See? He said, God, where is it? Job said, even today is my complaint bitter. bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. If he would just let me get there. Will he plead against me with his great power? No. But he would, he would put strength in me. He said, he wouldn't do this. He would strengthen me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge? Job is trying to understand this. He went back over his life. I, I was good to the people. I was eyes to those that were blind. I was hands. I was somebody's hand that couldn't help themselves. I done what I know to do. I'm trying to understand why this is happening. God chewed Jonah out. I mean, Job. After he done said all this, I'm thinking, God, he's a, I mean, I mean, this is difficult. You lost your wife, you lost your children, you lost everything you had, you lost all your money, you lost your everything. So, could, is it okay if I ask you why? God never said a word to him. If you think God's getting ready to answer you because you sitting over there like this, I said, I don't feel like praying from God. You might as well. You're going to get more out of praising than sitting on that pew thinking you're going to pout it out. Yes. And God got through talking to him. Where were you when I made laid the foundations of the world? He took him through one point to another to another point. Job couldn't say nothing. Job said, oh, that the day that I was born may it be blotted out. And God, he wished to die, preferred to die, but he couldn't die. You're going to have to come to the point in your life, I'm going to learn to roll with the punches. I'm going to learn that when things get difficult, that's life. I asked, I asked the uh, massage therapist the other day, and I, was, I said, what caused this stuff? I said, well, this could cause it, that could cause it. She said, but you know what it actually has to Life. Life causes it. Why you got these knots in your shoulder? Life. Why you stiffen your back? Life. Don't be alarmed. You know, it takes me a lot longer to move than you'd be. Yes. Thank God you're still alive. Thank God you're moving. You may not move as fast, but you're moving. You could not move at all. Just look at the situation. I told Lord, please. Please. And the please is, is nasty with God. Play! It's not going to happen, baby. Wrong attitude. I told my kids every time I'm sick, I said, my wife was low. I said, let it go. I don't want you upset with God. Oh, no, mom, I'm not upset. I just try to. I said, let it go. You know what I'm saying? Just let it go. I said, Lord, please do something for my mom. And I said, let it go. He knows what he's doing. He can do it today, or he can never do it. Either way, if he tells me good, if he doesn't, still good. I'm not going to put myself in a position where I'm frustrated. You know, I guess, you know, I pray for all these people, you touching folk and healing folk and everything, but what about me? <laughs> You almost want to tell some people you don't pray for. Could you come pray for me? <laughs> what is this? Why don't I understand? I told him this morning, I said, Lord, I cannot go in there Mother's Day dressed up with uh, stretch shoes on. I cannot do it. I was talking to my parents. I said, I know you never wore heels before. <laughs> I just was very honest with God. I said, I know this is vanity. I said, but I'm going to ask you today. To let me wear my heels today. And if you see fit, 
It's okay if you do it after, but at least today. And I explained to God exactly what's going on. I said, because you you know how we feel, but you never had to wear high heels, and you don't even know how much. But I know you care about the least thing that I have. And I got up this morning because I kept telling him I'm going to try my shoes this week and start walking because, well, you've been out of heels so long, you got to get your balance again. And so I, I didn't put them on all week. I kept, had some stockings there, didn't put them on. Mommy, you tried them yet? Nah. So after I talked to the Lord, I said, it's going to work. And sure enough, I could walk in. Walked up there and over there. Is that a big deal to God? If it is to me. He cares about the things I care about. Because I'm not going up there dressed up with flat shoes. Just not doing it. You're going to wear them heels if you have to have somebody hold you on both sides. <laughs> Can't do it. But I wouldn't have got mad if he hadn't done it. But when I walked around my house, it was like I never had them on. And it's been some years since I had them on. You know? I told him, I said, Lord, I, mean, I, I, I think one day I went in my closet and I said, see, you blessed me with all these shoes. Else I just got them anyway. <laughs> one of the, I, mean, I, I mean, maybe this ain't all blessed. Maybe this is some of my vanity. But a, a, anyway, uh, it's sure all pretty. I wish I could wear them again. But if you see fit that I never wear them again, it's okay. And I don't, I don't talk to him about it. I don't talk to him about it today. I cannot go there today like that. And I explained it to him. When I got through explaining, I knew he understood. And he understood so until he allowed it to be. I thought, wow. I told him in the office, I said, I'm doing this again. I'm doing this again if you'll let me do it again. I believe he will. I'm going to keep trying it. I don't think. I don't think. God is not concerned about us because he is. But I don't think having an attitude and a temper tantrum is going to change anything. See, none is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who has, pre who has prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can... Did, who can discover the face of his garment? Who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride shut up together as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. He goes on down talking about all these things. And he keeps talking about different things. I don't have time to read them all. And but he's looking at all this stuff and thinking, God did that. Don't get mad with God. If you do, you're never going to get nothing. If you think you can get mad at the king of the universe, I'm here to tell you that you will not. It will not happen for you. You got to ask yourself, search yourself and say, do I have an attitude? Do I have an attitude? I, I'm going to check myself. Check yourself. We're going through a lot of pressure sometimes. You're like, no, I'm not upset with God. Yes, you are. You know why we're upset? Because he can do it if he wants to, but he doesn't. We know he has the power to do it, but he chooses not to. Think about this message. I'm going to quit complaining. Don't complain after I'm gone. Boy, I should miss it the road. Didn't you have to leave me? You know, she, she needs to be. You know, I said, God, I so wish you had that. All about them. I said, Mom, you going to preach? I said, I don't know if I am. I wish you preached this message all about her. But if you don't feel feel like it, I understand. I won't be going out this door for 20 minutes. They go home tonight like, it just ain't the same. It's different. It's God doing his work, and all I got to do is open my eyes and my ears to what he's saying, and it doesn't matter about who the person is. It all depends upon whether the person presented themselves to God. Have an ear to hear and a heart to receive. That's all you need to do. So I ain't going to complain. Watch yourself all this week. I want you to jot it down. You're going to get shame. You're going to think, wow, I didn't know I complained that much about this, about that. You can get past it. Because if you praise him in spite of, your life is going to change in a tremendous way. Because I accept what he has given me. I accept this. I can't do nothing about it.
you say, well, I wish you could. I told the Lord, I said, I want to be careful so I know the difference when I'm talking to you and that rather than I'm complaining, I don't want to complain. Help me to be more conscious of that. Because there's a lot of things going on in our life that you probably could find a reason to complain about this crooked justice system. But by the time you get through with it, it's done nothing, but I noticed the other day that, that the Denver Post is starting to post the story in the, in the Denver paper. They wouldn't even write the story before. And now they keep pulling the, the press release. I think the third time now it's been in the Denver Post. I thought, oh, somebody over to the courthouse had made them mad. Y'all put it in there. So many people are pulling it all over the place. Where is God in all this? Don't know, but he's in it. Can't answer your every question. I tell my kids, I don't know. But mom, what the, I don't know. Did he say anything? No, he hasn't. You think he's going to say something? Don't know. Let's move on. Take it tonight. Don't complain. And I don't want you saying after two Sundays, after one Sunday. Some of y'all praise God. Don't act like you love me that much. Stand to your feet. Thank you.